Okay, so this is going to be a video about what I think the most likely sort of end of the world scenario is or, you know, at least something that's going to cause a lot of problems. And this is something that I've probably mentioned before and if you read the news a lot, you might mention it, see it mentioned like very slightly, but not, in, you know, in, in big articles, not as front page news as it deserves to be. But you notice that you sometimes watch other news stories where they kind of brush against the subject but that is not the focus of the report and that's that they're worried that there's going to be a new super plague that's sort of been or however you want to you know, call it that's being made from antibi uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria and basically the problem is is that for the last 30 plus years or so I mean obviously antibiotics were developed around the time of World War II but regardless of that, that you know, over time we've been using them more and more and more, um, and they've been using antibiotics um, when they shouldn't have really issued them. If you have um, a virus or well, not a virus, more of an infection, and you can fight that infection, you know, without needing antibiotics, you know, you're going to survive the infection. Um, it's better not to issue antibiotics to people. The issue being that bacteria can eventually become resilient to antibiotics and obviously there's lots of different types of antibiotics but if you have a bacteria that becomes immune to one type of antibiotic called a superbug um, it makes it much much harder to actually um, you know then eradicate that virus or bacteria again because I'm not um, a biologist I'm going to probably use the word virus and bacteria you know intermittently where I know I technically should be saying bacteria but regardless you'll get the gist of what I'm saying so the issue is that they have all these different types of antibiotics they can issue you if you have you know some sort of infection um, but the issue is that if you don't complete the course of antibiotics or just naturally over time some of these bacteria don't get totally wiped out and then they become immune to that chain of antibiotics and over time, uh, you are now getting sort of bacteria that have built up resistance to many different types of antibiotics. So they now have, you know, less, there's less you can treat them with. And then if you treat them with those less, you know, resilient things, um, or, you know, less options available, and then it, you know, becomes immune to another one of those options, you're narrowing down any of the antibiotics you have left. Apparently one of the issues is they haven't really done much research into new antibiotics in quite a while because they've had a lot of worked and that means obviously if you've not been researching new ones once your list runs out you can't get fresh ones you know if you've got all these antibiotics but they suddenly can't treat um, a, you know infection everybody's getting and that infection starts killing people you're in a bit of trouble aren't you and there's also you know this problem where um, as well as doctors is over issuing antibiotics to people when they don't really need them, uh, they use them a lot with farm animals when they're like, you know, massively, they have all these chicken farms and cattle farms and everything where they like massively breed animals on the industrial uh, scale for slaughter. The issue is that often they just give them antibiotics kind of as a prevention thing, as in it's cheaper to mix antibiotics in the food, I guess, than um, risk having to treat sick animals or whatever. So, the result of that is that, you know, this is obviously an ideal breeding ground for bacteria that becomes resilient to a kind of antibiotic. I actually saw kind of like a propaganda advert on TV the other day that was interesting, which was um, telling you, you know, if you go to the doctor and the doctor says you don't need antibiotics, uh, take the doctor's word for it. That's quite interesting, because obviously in the UK, for you Americans, we have sort of socialised healthcare. I don't know how that would vary in America. If... Um, you know, because oh, I don't even want to get into like the whole thing about lobbying and you know, like the pharmaceutical companies bribing doctors and all that. But I'm sort of you know wondering how that would you know work. But you know, we have like this sort of issue that's coming in a few different areas. One from the meat industry, one from you know doctors over prescribing antibiotics, and they have had a few cases so far of people who have died where they've caught one of these superbugs. They've tried literally everything they can find in the hospital medicine cupboard on them and nothing stops the bacteria. So I think this is one of those things where if you actually try and look for the news articles on it, you'll be surprised just how worried a lot of people are getting about this, you know, who are in positions where they understand about it because it seems that, you know, you're getting bacteria develop that we will have no way of treating and then you're going to go back to, you know, something that if it does become incredibly infectious, you're just going to have, you know, people dying left and right. It's going to be another Spanish flu 
um, you know, one of those historical plagues that wipes out a massive amount of people. I mean, obviously today, because we have a better understanding of medicine and sort of biology, you could um, much, definitely lower the chances of people uh, spreading it easier because you know how to quarantine things effectively and how bacteria actually spreads. But it's still kind of a worrying thought that they've, um, you know, just without thinking about it, issued out so many antibiotics to the stage where antibiotics are becoming useless. And as soon as you get um, some sort of super plague develop, there's going to be no actual treatment for it. So, yeah, as I said, it's a bit of a worrying situation. I assume your best bet, and I said I'm not a biologist, so you better listen to the you know official instructions from scientists if the time comes for this, but I assume what you'd want to do is just stockpile loads of food and bottled water in your house you know, like a prepping way, keep your doors locked when this thing's going around and, you know, if you had to go out wear a respirator with a full ABEC kind of P3 filter on it full combination filter just in case um, but it depends kind of how it's spread the bacteria I guess if it's one that needs to co come through like breaks in your skin or be inhaled or, you know, ingested through liquid or something at short range then you know, if you take good preventative measures, you should stay safe. But if it becomes something that's virulent as a cold, um, if you now easily common cold spread, well, upper respiratory infections, you'll suddenly kind of think, oh, that's kind of scary, because I'm sure you've all done a thing where you've been absolutely fine, you've been on public transport somewhere or whatever, and then, you know, a couple of days later you have a cold because somebody on somewhere had a cold. Um, so yeah, it's something to pay attention to, as I said, keep, you know, looking in the news for this because it's something that's brought up now and again and there's kind of updates on it, but the major news channels don't really cover it, I guess, because they don't want panic and they don't want people getting that prepping mindset of, um, you know, needing to actually bunker down and think about, you know, long-term food and water supplies and things like that, but there you go, yeah. That's one of the things I think in the short-term future, which is probably the biggest risk of, you know, to limb and life and whatever than a lot of the other things so uh, stay vigilant